Hello, good evening and welcome to episode 4 of the Science Fiction Rating System, a podcast that aims to list every science fiction film from 1 to infinity. That's the new little slogan, I think it's quite nice. 1 to infinity. <laughs> That's good. Taken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and beyond. And beyond. So every week we uh, review three films and add them into a gigantic list that you can see at sciencefictionratingsystem.com. Um, this week's films are Spaceballs, Silent Running, and Universal Soldier The Return. <laughs> and as ever, I'm joined by Chris. Hello. <laughs> and Alex. Hello. How is everybody? Good. Good. We were just talking about yeah. the Oscars. Yeah. The Oscars. Yeah. The yeah. Asco. Yeah. Were there any big sci fi wins? I don't think. Mm. Did, did Arrival get anything? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I think but... it did, yeah. I think it did. Ruined you ruined that film, Chris. Sorry, we're never going to watch it now. What do you mean? I saw um, you, you spoiled it last week. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Suicide Squad won an Oscar, didn't it? So that's now yeah, the Academy Award winning Suicide Squad, which is ridiculous. Yeah, no, that is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, what else happened? Bill Paxton sadly died, um, and we'll be celebrating that in the next episode. Um, is it yeah. only 61 as well which is a bit of a shame mm. yeah, yeah. That's sad. Uh, but um, we'll come to that later on uh, for now we've got other people's films to celebrate or <laughs> not celebrate or, in the case not. of perhaps some of these films um, so last week we chose two from the greatest science fiction films of all time and one from the worst and um, to get our three so let's get started um, I think yeah might as well yes so our first film is from 1987, the Mel Brooks uh, science fiction comedy film Spaceballs. Um, I think this is our first comedy, isn't it? Um, like out and out comedy mm. film. Yeah. Um, well, comedy no, in, in space. In, uh... What's in, in a space? No. Oh, oh, yeah, it's in a space. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Second one. <laughs> uh, n- neither particularly funny. Yeah. So yeah, before we get into it, um, I'll just go for the plot a little bit. Um, just a warning as well, there'll be spoilers everywhere, but I mean, it doesn't really matter being spoiled on this film, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's, the plot of, it's the plot of Star Wars. Oh no, we yeah. bought it. <laughs> so, uh, it's, yeah, by Mel Brooks, who of course is famous for like Young Frankenstein, Producers, uh, Blazing Saddles, all much better films. Um, and this was basically his take on a Star Wars sort of um, spoof. And the plot is basically um, the... Planet Spaceballs. They're pl- it's a planet and a people, and I don't know what else. Basically, the joke is it's you know the word balls, um, <laughs> and they're trying to steal the air from the neighbouring planet of Druidia using a giant vacuum, um, and also getting it out through a sort of space gate thing that looks an awful lot like the same thing in Rogue One. Oh yeah, I think they must hell have yeah, <laughs> stolen yeah. that from there. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, so uh, it's you've got your Han Solo character, which is Lone Star, played by Bill Pullman. Barth, who is the Chewbacca stand-in. Uh, John Candy is a Hold dog. Hold on, I never got any of these links. What? Oh, oh. What? <laughs> it's clearly <laughs> Han Solo, isn't it? <laughs> Just passed you by. This is new yeah. to me. Uh, the the terribly named uh, Yogurt, or Yogurt, as the Yoda mm. stand-in, which... I mean, the problem, we'll get into it in more detail, I'm sure. A lot of the jokes seem to have been thought up in five minutes and just just not changed. A little um, bit. For instance, Pizza the Hut, which was actually one of the best bit of, <laughs> bits of the film, really, just because it was just so yeah, uh, gross. Yeah, insane makeup. But yeah, so you've got a very simple uh, Star Wars rip-off story with some pretty terrible jokes, um, some good actors with some awful material, and Mel Brooks just being awful all the way through. I didn't enjoy it very much. Uh, Alex, what, what's your take well, on Space Force? I, rem- I remember, it. it's this thing, isn't it? I remember seeing this a long time ago and really liking it. Yeah. And then, and I love Mel Brooks. Like, I love all those films you said. I love High Anxiety as well. It's like oh, yeah, Hitch- yeah. his yeah. Hitchcock one. I love that. And then watching this again, yeah. it. Okay, okay, the good and bad, the, the good for me was that I thought that... Um, the whole Rick Moranis Dark Helmet character was way funnier than I remember him being. True, yeah. I think it was a really good performance. He's just the idea of him being this kind of little midget kind of 
like Hitler, like he's it just his physicality, the jokes. It's kind of that worked really well. Every scene with him and um, and the guy that's his kind of the um, George Winner, the Colonel Sanders, they they that worked really really well. The bad was kind of just a I don't know. It just felt really dated. It just a lot. It was quite. It was really sexist. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was just. It just a lot of the jokes, like you say, are just bad Lazy. puns. They don't really yeah. land. It. It yeah. just is. It's like a kind of like a child's version of a parody. Really, it's like yeah, yeah, totally. It, it doesn't. If you compare it, if you compare it to Scary Movie Four, or uh, so it's good. But if you compare it to something like <laughs> Airplane, it or even like the, the police, the police squad ones. I just didn't think it was good enough, really. So, no, yeah. So, good and bad, basically. Uh, Chris, how about you? Are you? Well, I think it suffers from the fact that uh, there's been so many better parodies of Star Wars. Yeah. Um, mm. like, like Family Guy ones and that sort of thing. Like, Oh, yeah. There's just so many. And also, when was this? When did this come out? Like, 87. This 87. Was. So... Star Wars went into a, an unpopular phase, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's come back, and now the level of humour around all of the ideas and jokes around Star Wars and the memes are so much on a better level now. Yeah, when that's really true. they yeah. were really just saying, you know, the, the stupid names. They were just, yeah. you know, yeah. Mm. So it's pretty base level. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think. Um, for me, there was there were two good jokes in it. The the first joke that I really liked was the very start of the film. You know, the long crawl of the ship. Oh yeah, where you just kept going with the yeah, music that's back a good gag. That's yeah, a good gag. gag. That's I like right. that. And I also liked uh, when John Candy, when John Candy meets the princess the first time, and he says, "I'm a marf. I'm half man, half dog. I'm my own best friend." And he just looks really happy. <laughs> and I thought that was a good yeah. good delivery. It was an all right little joke. Um, yeah. Other than that, nothing yeah. else really made me. Laugh, no? I don't think. Yeah, I like the the Maybe bit. Maybe the, I mean, the desert bit the with the big comb. That's all right. But yeah, it's just it, so. It you know, it's never like, how they um, actually got in all of the because there was a bit of like reference to Planet of the Apes and things as well. Yeah, yeah, and, and alien, the story with John actually, the, how the story uh, accommodated that, I thought was <laughs> was like, mm. was probably the best thing about it. But it was pretty poorly shot, and it even though how many. De- well, a decade after the original Star Wars was made, this still looks like it cost two pounds to make. <laughs> it cost yeah. loads, though. I read. I mean, it yeah, cost him yeah. tons. It's his most expensive film. Yeah, so twenty-two it's kind of million. Weird. That. Yeah. So it's like what, like twice the budget of the original Star Wars, and a decade. Yeah. Afterwards. <laughs> well, I think the model work is worse than uh, Silent Running. We're going to see next, mm, which yeah. obviously was made yeah. for a million dollars. Yeah. Like fifteen yeah. years yeah. earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, I watched the making of uh, Spaceballs, um, just a short, like, ten-minute thing. Yeah. Uh, and it was, the company was called Apogee something or other who were making it. Mm. And I, I don't know much about that kind of thing, but it looked a bit of a fly-by-night organisation, to be honest with you. It was a, bit, <laughs> a little bit on the uh, on the cheap side. But well, I obviously, guess was... they were playing for the comedy. They they yeah, wanted totally. it to look a little yeah. bit like mm. a joke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But... yeah you, you know, you mentioned that the Comb the Desert joke. That guy is actually um, Tuvac. Oh, is it? Yeah, two bar. Yeah, two bar. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, the yeah. one that says we ain't found shit. That's that's yeah. him. Yeah. There was a lot of, as you say, with Plant the Apes, and also with John Hurt coming in with Alien at the end. Oh um, yeah. A lot of sort of crowbarring in. Also, the guy at Police Academy being on the radar. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Lots of like crowbarring in things that don't like. Like you said, Chris, they don't they don't particularly fit in that well. <laughs> it's sort of it seemed like a lot of little ideas they'd had. You know, um, just for a sketch here or there, just crammed into one thing. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not I mean, it's really... no better or no worse than any like Saturday Night Live sort of. Yeah, it felt like a compilation of those, didn't it? Really, like if you yeah. said mm. show some Star Wars sketches off that, but not. And actually, they did some for the uh, the Force Awakens with uh, Adam yeah. Driver yeah. a couple of years ago, and mm. that in a similar sort of vein. And but obviously, they had all the actual sets and all the props from the force awakens so it's actually quite good <laughs> yeah yeah I, d- I quite liked all the merchandise jokes i thought that's quite a good piss take of george see, lucas and... again though, that's a thing that would have been funnier then wouldn't it whereas now yeah. that's a played out idea uh, like yeah. chris said that is the merchandise and things been played on so many times yeah uh, i guess but did you did you read the interesting thing about that was that george lucas read the script and approved it yeah yeah so but... he couldn't sell anything 
Yeah, but said you can't yeah. actually have the merchandise. So it's kind yeah. of he liked it, but he didn't want to make any money out of it. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, the, the thing about that bit though is the character, the character of Yoga is terrible. I think yeah. Mel Brooks yeah. really is the worst thing about this film. I think mm, maybe his, his role as is it President Screw is called. Yeah, those yeah. bits just yeah. aren't very funny. No, and I think you've got Rick Moranis no. and John Candy doing good work. Bill yeah. Pullman's not doing is, is all right. The the Princess Vesper. Yeah. She's yeah. fair enough, you know. Joan Rivers is all right as the ro- yeah. the android. Yeah. Um, in fact, actually, I think the guy, the guy who is with Rick Moranis, yeah, he's does a really good job. Doesn't yeah, he? he's like, really he's good. Like, no, the Colonel Sanders guy. Yeah, he's Colonel great. Sanders. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it just does. Yeah, it just doesn't really. It doesn't. It's not as good as I remembered. Sadly, yeah, for me too. Like as a kid, I remember loving it a lot, and I, knew, I a lot of this as I watched it a lot came back to me. I must have watched it an awful lot, but I just think, like you say. Well, for all the reasons we said, it, it's dated, isn't it? It's terribly dated. Yeah, yeah. The jokes are very obvious and have all been done better. And yeah, it's just it's not Mel Brooks' best. No, um, sadly not. I think maybe because he were they were trying to just do a really well a, a parody of Star Wars, so it kind of handcuffed him a bit to particular yeah. things. And yeah. you know, compared to his other stuff, it's just this is absolutely it, rubbish. You know, it is, so. but also. Um, I looked at his filmography and th- he did, never did anything else good after, um, like Spaceballs, the start of his decline, because Men in Tights isn't a good film, is it? Um, I don't uh, mind Men in Tights. No, I don't Dracula mind that Dead and Loving it. Because it's got Richard Lewis in it. No, that's not good. Oh, that's true, yeah. He's a blind <laughs> dude, <laughs> yeah. isn't he? No, he's the Sheriff of Nottingham or Prince John. Oh, is he? Uh, Prince oh, yes, yeah. John yeah. or whatever. Yeah. No, he's not. He's the blind dude. No, he's not. He's the, he's the, he's the, he's the <laughs> bad guy. No, he's not. He's the blind. He's like um... he's got a. Sp- he's got like a. He's not the blind guy. <laughs> he's not the blind Isn't guy. He? No, he's not. No. Oh, okay. Well, he's good. The blind guy is good. <laughs> oh no, he's yeah. He's not. He's not the sheriff. He's um. He's he's the prince, isn't he? He's not the sheriff. It's yeah, nice that like we're doing John. a medieval like, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Prince John. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that film's not very good. Um, Dr- and, and yeah, Dracula Dead and Loving It. Has anyone seen that? No, it's, uh, no, that's bad an awful film <laughs> yeah that's very bad oh well okay I don't think there's much more to say about this really is there I think it's sort of a, uh, sadly not there's not much there is there really no um, no it was interesting to watch it again but I can't say that I'll be returning to it <laughs> a, a third time it's got to go to the bottom no. of the list sadly well they said they're going to I also read they said they might make a sequel like another sequel yeah I read that they're trying to um, they're going to call it Force Space Wars 3 Spaceballs three, the search for Spaceballs two, which I thought was a good, it's quite a yeah. good yeah. name. But, or the um, Spaceballs two, the search for more money, which is what he calls the sequel in the in yeah. Spaceballs. There, wasn't there? There's actually a cartoon, wasn't there? N- not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, uh, I've I not read seen that. that. But um... it makes you wonder with like a with with like modern production values and people like Will Ferrell or something, it might yeah not be bad. Yeah. It's not like a modern Star Wars parody, is there, really, on that sort of scale? No, doing it's that just the uh, Family Guy ones. Yeah. I knew yeah. It, I knew this was rubbish before I saw it. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> so, are we, uh, so uh, personally, I would not put this below safety not guaranteed, but I'm guessing that's not a popular opinion. I'd say it's above safety not guaranteed. No, no it's yeah, rubbish. It's got to go below, sa- uh, below safety not guaranteed, I think. Um, I I just in, in like actual no. value of... Of it's a sto- you know in storytelling, Spaceballs isn't even telling a, a proper story. It's just taking a piss out of something. But Safety Not Guaranteed wasn't a science fiction film. <laughs> yeah, but um, Spaceballs is a comedy. It's a parody. It's not meant to be telling a deep story. I mean, I was going to say it's meant to be funny, which is not that either, is it? Yeah. Particularly. <laughs> so, um, so you think below, and Alex, you think above. Yeah, I think above. In every in every way that you'd rate this film, it's yeah. below safety guaranteed. No, I don't agree with that because I didn't like any of the characters in Safe Not Guaranteed, whereas I quite liked like Bill <laughs> mm. Pullman, Rick Moranis, yeah. and John Candy. Yeah. I agree, sorry. Alright. Been beaten again. <laughs> <laughs> it's always you two and me on the other side. Sorry, it won't uh, always be. And it I can't hack be. this, I can't go lower than <laughs> ten. It's in the list. Um, it's yeah. gone in uh, just below inner space, just above safety, not guaranteed. Okay. 
Um, I mean, really, we're basically saying everything sort of below they live is awful. Independent state, inner space, baseball, safe, not guaranteed. That's the kind of the real... Yeah. You know, they're all going to sink a long way. That's the real shit end of the list, isn't it? Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. Be honest. So you could put a big, like, thick line between... Well, it's uh, going to get busier on this. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I was going to say, they think safe, not guaranteed, we bottom for long. So don't, don't worry. Um, yeah. All right, so let's have a break and we'll come back with our second film. And we're back with the sound of clinking bottles as beer is poured. Mm. Um, Yum. And while I pour this beer, Chris, can you tell us a bit about our second film of the day, Silent Running? Yeah, yeah. So um, the second film is actually one of my... I do do like this film. I've always liked this film. Um, Silent Running. So this is directed by Doug Trumbull. And Doug Trumbull was actually originally uh, famous for being a VFX guy. And then he um, turned his hand to directing on this. Um, the effects on two thousand and one. Is that that right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Star Trek two. Okay. Um, and also more recently in like, uh, um, you know the big space sequences which are in the Tree of Life. You know that. Oh yeah. Big oh yeah. Art, arty sort of sequence. He he did yeah. all that. He's sort oh. of the go to guy for like the real. Uh, analog cool looking space yeah. mm. stuff so anyway so this this is a story it's kind of an ecological message uh i'm gonna spoil it but there's um spaceships where we've put all our forests onto because the i presumably the earth is pretty much fucked and mm-hmm. then um uh in a kind of a in a these are American Airlines, I think these spaceships yeah, are yeah. advertised <laughs> yeah. as, yeah. Uh, and then they 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 get the message to say uh, destroy all the uh, all the forests and return the ships back to commercial use. And uh, our, our main dude, played by uh, Bruce Dern, uh, doesn't like that idea, so he goes a little bit rogue, <laughs> uh, and he makes friends with these uh, droids as well, which are kind of R two D two rip offs. Um, Five years before, though. Uh, yes, you're right. Seventy-two, um, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I take that back. R two D two was ripping these off. Yeah. Well, it's actually I read that um, Universal claimed 20th Century Fox uh, copied them, mm. and in a counter suit, Fox claimed Universal's Battlestar Galactica plagiarized Star Wars. So it just all kind of, I guess, it just all stopped. Oh, so it evened out. And, and did you know, yeah. as part of the settlement for that, that the a lot of the uh, external shots in Battlestar Galactica are um, the space shots from Silent Running. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's got a very okay. similar sort of style to how them space shots mm. were shot and composed, yeah. and um, the the spaceships and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, so he goes a little bit rogue, and they, there's like some drama when they have to pass through Saturn's rings, and one of the one of his uh, friends, the little droid, gets fried. Um, so you're a fan anyway. Yes. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, it's a slow mover, right? Yeah. And uh, my film is a slow mover <laughs> in the same <laughs> in the same way. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You were influenced by this somewhat. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, what do you guys think, Alex? Uh, I re- I really t- I remember I saw this a long time ago, um, and I remember liking it. And but in my head, it's like we were talking last week about how you remember how you remember the films. Mm. I just kind of remembered him being on the ship with the robots and not really anyone else being there. I'd almost mm. forgotten that kind of first act where there yeah. were the other three guys, and then he goes nuts and kills them and like it you know and i'd forgotten all of that and i think i really like it it's really depressing i mean it's really (laughs) really dark um but i think for a film you know you compare it to wally um which obviously was so influenced by it um but the message you know it has got that ecological message that very strong nature message but it done bruce Dern's character is so so weird and so almost mm. psychotic 
he he does the right thing, but he's not like a nice guy, really. He's a yeah. really seven, it's odd. very seventies though in its style. Yeah, kind of. yeah, totally. Yeah, it, it definitely uh, um, benefits from that kind of grey area, doesn't it? Yeah, like that, and like Chris said, that's a very seventies sort of idea of. Um, it's sort of character first, isn't it? And then second, mm, second. Yeah. I guess because it's still quite yeah. old, old sci-fi. It reminds me a lot of uh, Alien, um, the first yeah. Alien, mm. which I think yeah. also borrowed a lot from it, especially that first act with the crew yeah. there. Um, the same sort of like, you know, the claustrophobia and tension amongst them. Mm. Um, yeah. Obviously not played quite as seriously as Alien. but it's. I love them little it's... like June buggies that they have. They're cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. I mean, no, but... I think it's, it's a pity how old it is and how cheap it was made because I think that the only thing that sort of pulled me out of, of the, the setting was the set. Like, it, it doesn't look very good, does it? No, um, it's very of its time, know. isn't it? That's how they thought the future would look. Like, tons of buttons, tons of screens. I love that uh, snooker machine thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you, have you not, has anyone else watched, seen the making of for this? There's a making of on YouTube. Um, no, no, I haven't. 45 minute making of. Oh, it's quite interesting. They, um, they filmed it on a, a battleship. Oh, a lot okay. of the um, yeah. shots inside. And the director actually. Um, because they didn't have any offices or anything like that, he used the deck as his office. So it's like shots in a deck chair, making revisions and stuff on the deck of this big warship, wow. Oh, wow. which is quite good. But um, yeah, a lot of what they're doing, because of course that was his background, um, it's quite ingenious, a lot of things they do. Yeah. It shows you, um, I don't, I'm sure you're aware that there's the, the, the robots are uh, double amputees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it shows them in the suits and stuff and talks oh. to them and things. And um, it's, it's it really interesting. I actually found the documentary more interesting than the film um, <laughs> because it's not only not only because of the actual context of the documentary, but because it's such an early um, an early example of a documentary. Yeah. They're so mm. clearly uh, not used to the idea of having a crew filming That's and filming. Cool, yeah. yeah. And oh, it's, okay. it's really good. Like they're, It's yeah. very sort of... And it was probably shot in the UK as well, right? Was it? Uh, no, I don't think it was. No, no um, okay. I, I can't remember if they actually say that. Um, they do start with a brilliant bit where, before the documentary, the narrator explains to you like, what a documentary is, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which is good as well. It's really yeah. good. I, I might put it in the show notes. Actually, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's, it's a brilliant watch. Yeah. I'll be watching that. It's a, the the robots are are really good. The way that you do really feel for the robots, considering yeah, they don't have really faces, well or yeah. you know, you, you can, really you can tell they've had slightly different amputee because one is longer than the other do you know what I mean yeah like yeah. one's one's been amputated at the knee and yeah one... well they, they had real trouble getting the actors yeah. to do it apparently um yeah they're great designs yeah, yeah. oh fantastic yeah. they had to be light as well that's something else in the documentary because it's because mm. obviously they've got to wear them and um they're all like they weigh less than 20 pounds the things they're wearing so if you think that how yeah. light that is yeah and they do look quite good don't they for that um oh yeah yeah I mean, the good thing about it is, as old as it is, because the design is so consistent, it doesn't really matter, does it, that it's an old film? No, it all the fits music, together, the music was a bit bad. <laughs> the Joan Bay songs are terrible. Yeah, but I actually, <laughs> yeah. I actually read there's some UK band called Sixty Five Days of Static. Yeah, who did recorded it, yeah. an entire new soundtrack. So you can literally, if you hated the music as much as me, put the yeah. film on, listen. It's that's I found that as well. You can listen to the whole soundtrack different. Because I really oh. didn't like the music. I found no, it. The music, yeah. the music is awful. Yeah, yeah, that dated it. Yeah, the, the worst thing is you get the one Joan Bay song at the start, don't you? And then she comes on again halfway through, yeah. doesn't she? And you think, oh yeah. god, this is. Yeah. Uh, I find yeah. it a bit hard to believe that even though he's a botanist, it took him a while to work out that the plants need sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, now you say that, that does seem pretty dumb, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, we're in space, there's no sun! <laughs> and the answer to it was to turn some lights on. Turn some lamps on, yeah, and you'll be fine forever. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's pretty stupid, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, I mean, it's kind of incidental, isn't it? Because it's, a, it's a more about mood and it's more about the, the bigger concept, isn't it? Like mm. the, yeah. I think viewed as a as a story with a clever twist at the end, it's terrible, mm. isn't it? The only real mm. bit of the story that that I liked was when it went bad and he when he strangles the guy in the garden and it's you don't expect it, do you? You know he's a no. bit crazy, but you don't expect it to go so bad so quick. You know, he blows no. two of them up and he murders no. the third one. It's yeah. quite a no. a shocking yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a good it's a good the kind of the dilemma of if you what would you do for what you believe is right? You know, he's right. Yeah. He needs to save those things. It is important. Yeah. But, you know, like when they explain how Earth is, you know, there's no unemployment, everyone's happy, everyone's got food, there's a constant temperature. I mean, that is good, but it is that thing of, but obviously there's no, 
you know, people obviously aren't driven, they're not got, you know, he says there's no frontiers, there's no one doing, like, attempting to do anything anymore. Yeah, which um, I think, um, by mistake, probably, that's played out by the fact that everything the robots do, they do a lot worse and a lot slower than a human would. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's intentional yeah. or, just a, a, you know, a, a yeah. sign of the robots they got at the time, but <laughs> mm. it, it, it's... I, I can't remember. Is it when it's always resetting the uh, pool table, isn't it? Oh, and he yeah, like yeah, picks yeah. a ball up super slowly. Like and the guy, he's just like leaning on it, looking at it do this yeah. very slowly. I thought you could. He have plays cards. They play, play yeah. cards. Yeah. yeah, true. Badly, true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the yeah, the intercom system with the other the other ships. Yes, I love. Yeah. I love all that as well. The way um, it's it's all very positive, isn't it? Like he's all they're all mm. trying to rescue him, and there's not any sort of. Where you'd expect to find conspiracy and yeah. uh, the government's out to get you, none of that's there. And no. the robots aren't out to get you. Yeah. You know, no, no one's actually out to get you. They're all looking out for you. They just need, need yeah. to blow up these rainforests. That's the only yeah. thing they're against. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which no, it, that's you could. Yeah. I think if that film was made now, it would definitely be the evil government. Well, you know, it'd be it'd be Moon. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah, it would be Moon. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, but no, you're right. There'd be some subplot of why they want to destroy that because of the evil oil corporations, or yeah, it would be more. It's but it's so much better that you know they think he's this hero. Well, they think he's a hero for just dying for no reason, but it's he's killing himself. Like he's done it all deliberately. Yeah. So they're kind of like, oh, what a sacrifice! It's like, well, I just killed three people, and you know. Yeah, yeah it's like, a dark ending, especially <laughs> yeah. like not only him dying, but the fact that the last rainforest is just hurtling off into space with one <laughs> drone looking after it. It's a bit yeah, yeah. Odd. I can't see where how that's going to end. <laughs> no. It doesn't yeah. even have doesn't even have an engine now. Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, it ends with him, I guess, getting sucked into a planet's gravity eventually, and that's yeah. the end of it, isn't it? <laughs> it <laughs> he was just goes a, around, I, around for a bit. I read as well there was an alternate script where um, Douglas Turnbull says an alternate script where. It was a bit different, but the end, the alternate ending was aliens found the forest. Oh, yeah, I read that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of how maybe more positive, I guess, because they maybe, mm. I don't know, maybe they make a planet of rabbits and frogs and nice mm, swimming yeah. pools, I don't know. That but, would have been yeah. awful, wouldn't it, though? Like, yeah. Especially with that production budget, <laughs> aliens yes. would have been... Uh, oh, God, yeah. Well, they could have done it take. like 2001, like quite abstract. Trippy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trippy, glad they didn't. trippy aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's interesting to think that the cult, the future culture, doesn't care about biodiversity at all, and it just would do that, though. Mm. Kind of realistic. Throw stuff away. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's always the in thing now. That I don't think that would happen now. Well, they they never explain why they need to blow up the forest, do they? It's because they need the ships to go money to uh, to commercial use. Yeah. Oh right. Oh yes, he explained that. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they're converting them. Yeah. 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 Because they've been out haven't they, for eight years. That's it. They're going back yeah. on yeah. now to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So I think we're all a lot more positive on this one than uh, Spaceballs. Definitely. Um, well, it's actually. I mean, this inspired probably quite a quite a lot of what's going to be on the list. Oh, without a <laughs> so, doubt. Yeah. Hell yeah. I yeah. mean, like a- Aliens definitely influenced by that start bit. Yeah. Um, Wally is. A massive influence by it, obviously. Yeah. Um, Star Wars, the droids. There's a lot of. Yeah. I think um, the shots of the ships. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't that's think they're like that, that good. Is it? Mm. I don't think. But I, but I think that idea of like the hole with the bit sticking off it. It's not that advanced and stuff like that. But that's the probably the first time that's happened, isn't it? Yes, because like very a... industrial sized ships like that. Because 2001, it's all very pretty, isn't it? It's not like that. No. Yeah. What do yeah. you say, Chris? Sorry. I mean, it was it. it the designs for things are. I think a lot of work's gone into it for the time. It's very cleverly done. Yeah. Um, like, you know, when all the mm. cargo pods are like these geodesic, like things yeah. that stack together, that's quite clever. I mean, I think there was some quite cool stuff. Um, yeah, really cool. Yeah, no, really cool. Yeah. Really good design all the way through, I think. I think uh, Red Dwarf as well owes a lot, doesn't it? Like, yeah. That is, yeah. It's, I didn't realise how much a rip-off that shot was of, you know, the, the early <laughs> series of Red Dwarf when it goes out the yeah. window. That is like shot for shot, isn't it? For when he's Definitely, sitting in, yeah. the, in the room. Mm. Um yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, in, really interesting to watch, um, and yeah, important. I think, without a doubt. So, I don't know why there was no women on this spaceship. I don't know. The crew in it's just crewed by assholes. Yeah, it yeah. was, but like, it, wouldn't it? Like, you think you've been in space for eight years, just those four people. Mm. No, it's only him that's been in eight years. The others have only been there up there a year, I think, or not that long. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Because he's attached to the forest. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So where are we mm. thinking in the list? Chris, where do you think? Third? Mm, yes. No. I would put it... Uh... Hang on, Chris. Before you carry on, yeah. let's just go... You think it's better than Wally? Yes. Uh, and Eternal Sunshine, her? And yes. Things? Yeah. A lot of those, like you said, Wally wouldn't exist without this film. So, yeah, I think it's better. Okay. Chris, where, where are you thinking? I think either side of Wally, I'd, I'd probably say four. I think, okay. yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought, Ooh. yeah. I mean, it could easily be low. I think it could be lower, but I... I think there's a lot to admire there, and it has done a lot for films, without a doubt, but I think as an actual viewing experience... Yeah, I know what you mean. As an entertainment piece of entertainment, it's not. Yeah, like so, I can appreciate yeah. it a lot. But as I say, I enjoyed the making of more than the actual film. The yeah. film, it's all right and it looks really nice. Alex, what? Why would you say third? What is it that you find so? I just, I just think I really, I, I think the the design, the look of it, what they did for the time and the budget. Um, I think the, I think Bruce Dern's performance is brilliant, and I think it's um, it's different. The take, the the take. How they do it, how they do that message, how they do that story is different from a lot of other things. Like you say, that the elements they bring in, it's not what you expect. Him going a bit mad, you know. I think it's just a. I just think it's very innovative um, and important. I think it was an. Imp- it's an important film. Mm. Uh, so that's why I would rate it high. But I can see why you're saying it is a bit dated, and it is. Yeah, yeah. I can see why you're. I can see the counter argument as well. So the question is: Is the list about what's important or what we'd want to watch? See, I connected with it bet more than things like her. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just like the themes more than. Mm. than well, okay. So if, if you're show. saying, I, I take three, f- Alex. Four. Yeah. I, what about five? five. Below to the sunshine. I take five. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm saying five. So I, I think seven. Yeah. Okay. Five. Alex thinks three. So no, I'll take five. I'll take five. So above yeah. her and below Eternal Sunshine, yeah? Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. Let's yeah. switch that over. Okay, so... I wouldn't have it. Five. I mean, if you know, if you came up to me in the street, I wouldn't... I'd probably put it below Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably put it above Independence Day. <laughs> but no higher. I think I'd... You know, it's actually be eight, yeah, not seven. I'd put it below They Live. Yeah. Would you, do you think it's a better film than They Live, Alex? I just like I say, I just think it's it really is. important. I think it's important. I just that's what. But like you say, maybe it's not about what's important. Maybe it's about they live fucking but, weird. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, would but just wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather watch they live than silent running? I think it's about what what it's watchable. Well, isn't it? see, because I think I we're think... all entering dangerous territory here because if it's about what you would rather watch, the yeah. next film. I would say <laughs> I would rather watch <laughs> than a lot of the films on this list. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so I will uh, move it swiftly on. Silent Rings number five. <laughs> I won't push that any further. Um, okay, one final break and we'll be back with our final film of the day. Welcome back to part three of the science fiction rating system. That was very, um, a bit intense. Wasn't Exciting. It? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited a because. <laughs> put a vocoder on. Yeah, we could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm excited because we're here to discuss. What we need. Oh, that's what we should have, you know. If we ever have anything where we can't agree, yeah. we need like a computer where we put it in and then we it, it tells us where it should go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can we, can we do that? <laughs> will you get on building that? Um, <laughs> I will do. An actual, I'll, okay. I'll knock that up. Chris so, Bart. No, it'll, we'll call it. It'll have an abbreviation like Seth. Okay. Oh, like well, Seth. Don't ask that. Don't ask <laughs> Seth. Brilliant. Love, lovely segue, which brings us right on to uh, Mike or Mick Rogers. M I C Rogers, nineteen ninety nine film, uh, Universal Soldier: colon, The Return. Um, if you're a big Universal Soldier fan, yeah, you're right. It's no longer part of the canon. <laughs> they wrote it out of the canon. 
Yeah, um, <laughs> disgusting. That's it's, disgusting. It's that bad. So, uh, yeah. Alex, this is your film. So, just yeah. take us through what this is all about. I'm, ha- I'm happy. I'm happy to take you through. So, it's the sequel to um, Universal Soldier, the 1992 Ronald Emmerich and uh, um, Dean Devlin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> another one of theirs. That's they, they made the. I wonder why the best... poster of this looked like Stargate. And I wonder well, why. They, now yeah, you know. They're not involved with this one. No, they're not involved no, they're getting they're taking off the back of that. But it, it's um, it follows the the hero of Universal Soldier, Luke Devereaux, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, <laughs> and seven years <laughs> after the events of the first film, seven years, uh, Luke is uh is now an ordinary human. He's not a Universal Soldier anymore, uh, but he's working for the government. Um, making what is Universal... a Universal Soldier? I never saw the oh. first one. Well, a universal soldier, they were basically Vietnam vets brought back to right. life to work for the government. Brought back to, to life? Be, yeah, yeah, brought they, back they from the dead. Yeah. They right. die in Vietnam, brought back to life, uh, reanimated, and then they, yeah, uni-soul for short. And in the first film, uh, it's him, Van Damme um, versus Dolph Lundgren, who's a psychotic mentalist. Okay. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway. Cool. Continue. So now, ears, isn't he? he? Likes ears. Is that right? Oh, I'm all ears. Yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah, that's the best bit. Yeah, yeah. That's a better um, film, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah but anyway, so the so the uni, uni soul program's still going. They're still bringing soldiers back from the dead and making them unstoppable cyborgs. And um, but uh, and they've got a, they've got a, uh, a computer who runs everything called Seth, the self evolving through Helix. That's what it stands for. Oh wow! There you go. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway, and... Um, I like how uh, the abbreviation is so, like, pedestrian, though. Yeah, just a name. Just a really I like 90s how, uh, name. <laughs> I like how the computer's got the voice of a black man and then happens to end up in a black man's body. And that was there very, you go. Uh, convenient, well, they had one in storage, <laughs> didn't they? They just had that black guy in storage, just downstairs in the basement, as you know, in the yeah. opening shot. But anyway, sorry. So the final bit of the plot is that um, the military turn up and say, I'm sorry... You need to stop bringing people back from the dead and turning them into unstoppable cyborgs. And someone, no spoilers, someone is not happy with the program being shut down and decides to take it on themselves to keep the uni souls alive. So can I just stop you there a second, Alex? Because shutting down this program is the most sensible thing ever, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, can we all agree ridiculous. that this is the yeah. worst the idea film. ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What? Why have they let this go on for seven yeah. more years? What were they thinking? They've already it's... seen the events of the first film. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The fact that in that for, in that opening bit, that guy gets choked out yeah. by no, you know, for no apparent reason, yeah. only to walk back in the room and go, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" And then gets killed, doesn't he? Like that. Poor, yeah. It's the who would take a job there? Why would you take a job at this place? Yeah. <laughs> the training exercise as well involved. Actual live rounds being shot at uh, yep. Jean Claude Van Damme, and is that more, more in the first film? Or was she? I don't know. I don't remember her. I don't think no. so. No. See, um, we- weirdly, Michael J. White, who plays Seth, uh, yeah. he is in the first film as a soldier, and I don't know if that's a brilliant piece of oh, clever right. casting or it's just a silly mistake, and he wasn't meant to. You know, I don't think he's being the same. Per- I don't know. I don't know if it's really clever or really stupid if he's the same person. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, I mean, so um, Chris, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you, in a nutshell, what, what do you think of this film? Horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you send, you know, you send round the file of the film. Yeah, and then uh, for some reason, no, my... no, no. Hang on, I don't. I buy the DVD, and, yes. and we all buy yeah. DVDs and watch yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Post for, it to for us. educational value. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so for some reason, when I click on it. It just like flashed up with like some a woman stripping like with a tit out, <laughs> <Right? laughs> and then it went back to the then it went to the beginning. Obviously, just like the credits. So yeah. I'm watching it. I was like, "Is that part of this film?" <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there is there is this. Um, oh, the strip club bit. The strip club is completely exploited. Yeah, it's amazing. Strip club. It's so we where... can use the internet. Uh, yeah, but then when he goes into the internet. Um, the the people working on the sex lines have got someone doing pole dancing for them in that room, <laughs> <laughs> just so they can have some tits in the back of the shop yeah. while he uses the computer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he he knows they have internet. I, I like that he's basically like a creep and a pervert, and <laughs> just very open about it. He's been in there before to try and use the internet in inverted commas, hasn't he? Which also <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? Because what in what capacity are they using the internet? 
No, it's so many things in this film that don't make sense. But I, that's why I loved it. It was, it was just so ridiculous. Like, does he still make films, John Claude Van Damme? He did for a long yeah. time. Then he came back with uh, J, was it JVCD. It was called. When I first started, oh, I love that. It, that's yeah, pound, film. like eight years ago. There was he was still doing films, and he, he was still on like posters. Yeah. Mm. So okay. actually, this no, is still. This, this was his last big budget, uh, big budget film for I think it was ten years. This, but he had a set was... rate of two million dollars, like wow. ten yeah. years ago. Where yeah, well, he'd do well, anything, now, he'd literally he? do anything if, if he just got a two million. His um, his next like wide release after this was uh, the Expendables. Yeah, Expendables, right. Expendables three, two, fact, wasn't he? Or oh, two is it three? Or three? No, I think it's two. Yeah. He's in two, isn't he? Two. Yeah. Um, well, so that's a well, long Universal. Time Universal Soldier fans will be happy to know that that both Dolph Lundgren and Van Damme are in the last two films. There was one in yeah. 2009 and one in 2012. Yeah. yeah. Day of Reckoning in 2012. So you can still watch these. Lost $30 million, this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it cost $40 million. Like, in itself, is quite... It's just one set, really, That's isn't it? a lot. It? Oh, there's yeah. a lot there's... of good explosions. Come on, there's lots of good explosions. And there's one special effect, which is the frozen uh, Seth exploding at the end, which oh, looked yeah. like a, a PlayStation a 1 shot. game. The way it's shot is terrible. It just yeah. looks terrible. A lot of bad edits where, for instance, Jean-Claude Van Damme is lying on the floor and next shot he's up with a gun in his hand, just mm. instantly. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cutting around his very poor acting. Oh, yeah. Yep. As well. yeah. It, yeah. It's almost the level... Have you seen The Room with Tommy yeah. Wiseau? I yeah. said that. It's, it it's was a lot like, of The Room. Yeah. I think he has watched a lot of this performance. And he's, <laughs> he, this is where he's learned how to act. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they, they sound like they're from a similar part of the world as well, which I think, I think Tommy Wiseau is from Poland or somewhere, but that mm. is... Yeah. He's from... Uh, the muscle's from Brussels, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Band, um. but, Although, I mean, is he meant to be an American? I think he is, isn't he? This, this uh, see, it, it missed, it missed well, my two... Well, this is what two... I'm telling you, but Tommy Wiseau is the same. He's, he insists he's American. Because yeah. of this sort yeah. of mental, sort of kickboxing nutter, yeah, which yeah. is John Claude but, Van Damme. <laughs> but my two, my two favourite John Claude Van Damme things are when he does the splits and hopefully punches someone in the balls. <laughs> but also yeah. when they explain when they explain why he's got a funny accent and they didn't get to do that in this, so I was a bit sad by that. I like his um, piss poor attempts at sort of comedy and the like the face yeah. he pulls. He's sort yeah. of like gurning at the camera, which they cut from instantly because it's terrible. <laughs> Anytime he tries to like go, whoa, this is crazy, you know. Yeah. He also, don't you think he kind of runs a bit like he's had some terrible accident? Like he's got kind of a strange <laughs> gait to him. He kind of he kind of stumbles. And there's, yeah. a, there's a bit when, when he breaks back into the facility with the army gang and they're, all the rest of the extras are doing quite a good job of, of pretending to be army men. Like, you know, in cover and stuff like that. And he's just sort of wandering around, stumbling into corners. And he opens a door and sort of gets stuck on the door at one point. And all these sort of yeah. weird bits where, obviously because of his profile, the director couldn't say to him, can you do that again, uh, you know, JC? <laughs> you kind of you kind of, you kind of walked no, into the door like, that karate time. karate kicked the director through the wall. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, He's really phoning it in. He really is. Um, he's, no, he's got quite... A, I'm just checking out his karate career. He's got quite a... Oh, yeah. Weight. He's He was... Quite big kickboxer, yeah. Remember that film. Um, as bad as he is, he's not the worst character in this film. The worst character in this film is Squid. Oh, yeah. The the hacker. Yeah, yeah. He's bad. Who is overacting <laughs> to such an extent that I don't know. It's ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. absurd. <laughs> he's um, just he just seems to be there because of that soundtrack. That kind of nineties. Metal soundtrack. New, new it's metal. Like, yeah, they're yeah. trying to bring in a character that they're yeah. people watching it will go, "Oh my god, he's just like me." Actually, the, <laughs> the, the theme of this week could be awful music because Spaceballs. The theme to Spaceballs yeah. is actually absolutely yeah, that, awful. Yeah. I might end this end the show with that. It is so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Joan Bay's music is terrible in, in yeah. Silent Running, and and this well, the, is the, the all, new metal. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. It's all every time they fight, yeah. someone's got to start going. You know, destruction. <laughs> These no. were all bad times for <laughs> dating of music, though, weren't they? These when yeah. these were made. Yeah. Um, no, the music is oh, unforgivable. Yeah, it's, it's really that sort bad. of. Uh, well, it's ninety nine. Is it? It's a Matrix sort of thing, isn't it? Um, that kind of dr- drum the and bass meets on new the Matrix metal. Matrix after this. Oh, did he? Oh, that yeah. says a lot. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Really bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the story doesn't make sense. Um, you get Seth, the robot, who goes inside a, a dude's body. Doesn't really do much. 
kind I of Michael, liked the I girl. I thought Michael J. Of... White was quite good. I thought he was. I didn't. I think he was trying. I just give him that. I think yeah, he was he... trying his best to be. He was trying his best to be as good as he could with very, very, very little. I thought. Yeah, so that's true. You know, credit to him. I'd say. Also, the uh, army general is, oh, is, God. is, is, yeah. is like fighting. Fighting against the script <laughs> to try and be a credible army general, isn't he? But yeah. really failing. Yeah, no, it, um, yeah. It's so. It's this era of kind of like dodgy fighting movies, like Street Fighter. Yeah. Uh, Hulk, Hulk Another Hogan Van Damme had a classic. TV show where he used to beat people up and like investigate mm. crime. Um, uh, not Tropic Thunder. Yes. Yeah. Thund- no, Thunder in Paradise. Sorry, Thunder in Paradise. Yeah. Thunder yeah, Paradise. yeah, yeah. I yeah, love the I love the bit when the um, big wrestler guy goes in the hospital and there just happen to be those three oh, yes. huge orderlies <laughs> that just happen to work in a hospital but w- are also pro wrestlers. Yeah, because because the first guy is a security guard. You think oh, that's a bit weird. He's a wrestler. Then two of them come out like in the nurses' scrubs and they also look like wrestlers and start that's wrestling. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I'd forgotten. No, uh, it's what's it? Goldberg, isn't it? Um, the wrestler who? Yeah. What's, yeah. what's his character? Romeo. Yeah, who I He's, know, like you yeah. know, that's a kind of a trope of like the character you can't kill, but yeah. it must be about fifty times he oh, gets knocked down yeah. or killed. Oh, and it's it's yeah. back. so boring. When she rides yeah, him really down bad. the stairs into the wall, I love that bit. That was a good bit. Yeah, <laughs> I also like the climactic fight on a bunch of deck chairs. It's a nice touch. <laughs> they go into like, yeah. the tanning salon. They've got inside there, and he's like running across the back of deck chairs. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah there's a really lot. Is um, insane. The thing is, though, you say it's of the era, but I mean these films are still made, aren't they? There's, yeah. there's a lot of these coming straight to DVD all the time. And well, I don't know um, if you like if fighting films like John Wick and and uh, Taken Two and all these sort of things. They they've got a lot more value than no. But I'm thinking did. things like um, what's that film? Uh, the first person film with the guy out of District oh, 9, Hardcore Harry that? Henry, hardcore yeah, Henry. that one, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. That's the kind of low budget and still, you know, it's still yeah. shit. Um, yeah, this wasn't low budget. This was. That's the, I think that's, that's what the true. problem it's is, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's all the money, and it just went so horribly wrong. But yeah, so brilliantly wrong, I would say. <laughs> brilliantly wrong. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it wasn't quite bad enough to be entertainingly bad for me. That's the problem. It oh, wasn't quite on that level no. of awfulness. It was. It was. It was awful, but it was kind of awfully boring. There, there were bits that I liked. Um, oh. the, going down the stairs, that was good. Uh, <laughs> there was bits I like walking down the stairs. <laughs> no, no, not walking. Riding when gold down that the man. stairs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like a lot of. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's ab- absolutely awful. I loved it. I'm sorry. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> so, 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 Alex, where would you put this in the rating, dare I ask? I would probably put it above... I would probably put it under Independence Day. You know Starship Troopers was like a couple of years before this? Yeah. Um, uh, the budget was twice. It was 100 million Starship Troopers. But it shows you actually like what a good filmmaker can make a difference. <laughs> like, so what's the what's the budget for this? Forty million. Forty five and forty five troopers was five. You have got to wonder where that forty five's gone because there well, is. That's why I said I think it was a money laundering thing. I don't you think, think any of that <laughs> went anywhere near the camera. You've got two sets, haven't you? You've got the 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 yeah the main building. One set. Oh, I guess it's a little bit in jungle. Like isn't an there? office block. Yeah, a little bit yeah. in the jungle at the start, and then the strip club, and that's it. Yeah, the strippers, yeah. The strippers would have cost a few quid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all cash. What's the um, the character actor who plays the doctor who gets attacked by lightning? That's another thing. Why fit a lightning, some sort of lightning <laughs> attack, fitted into your computer? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. He's in loads of stuff. He's like 24 and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, uh, he was awful as well. He was yeah. really. That effect that they have on that computer, it's like a um, sort the of. The cube. A, yeah, it's terrible. There's a storm in the cube. <laughs> That's how you know there's something wrong with it. The yeah. computer's ill. There's a storm in the cube. Oh, also, how could I forget the computer's interface when it like prints onto the mach- machine in like um, yeah. thirty six yeah. font size font. Yeah, its demands when it, when it goes. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, it's because the, the guy comes in and um, the doctor comes in and says to the, the computer. Oh, the computer goes. What's wrong with you? And he goes. Oh, I've got a cold. <laughs> and the computer very slowly prints out. Um, Doctor, doctor looks ill. Reasons why: number one, has a cold. Number two, um, has an infection. Number three, something else. Number four, deception. Yeah. And then it zooms in, and the text starts flashing. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, it completely rips 2001 with the whole um, the whole lip reading thing. I mean, it's like almost oh, shot a- for shot sure. when he's yeah. talking to mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's really blatant but, about that. But but with a real like late nineties sort of word, <laughs> yeah. Microsoft Word ninety seven yeah. clip yeah. art font, you know. Yeah, because yeah. it's like a weird um, sort of um, like beige background as well, isn't there? <laughs> it looks it looks like he's printing out newsletters for an office in the late nineties, isn't it? That's what he's doing. All his all his demands are coming out on on, uh, on newsletters. On, uh, yeah, dot matrix. Yeah, poor poor all round. So. Uh, 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 I mean, the tough thing for me with this one is that it's 11 or 12. It's either above or below Safe to Not Guaranteed. And it is a worse film than Safe to Not Guaranteed, but there was some entertainment to be had from how awful it was. Mm. And that's my only argument for going above Safe to Not Guaranteed. Safe to Not Guaranteed, I, I mean, I, as I think I made my point last time, <laughs> I found offensively awful. Like, it was just so bland and terrible. At least I got some enjoyment out of how, how bad this was. So I would say above, so it's not guaranteed. Alex, you'd say above in a space. Chris? I would. Sorry, Chris, I would. Yeah, I love Where this. Where are you saying, Chris? The right, it's right in the bottom. It's going. It's got to be in the bottom. Below, so it's not guaranteed. Yeah, this, this has got to be bottom. This is no way on earth <laughs> it's better than anything on that list. <laughs> And we've got some pretty bad shit on that list already. <laughs> I mean, you are right. Yeah. But, can't, but you, you can't... How could you possibly even entertain this I, not being I, I at the bottom? Genuinely... If we had more films on this list, right, and there was yeah. more of a gap, say there's more stuff below safety guar- not guaranteed, and, you know, maybe it would, st- it would go below. It would still go below. Oh. But it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I did, Chris is right. It needs but to as go a science bottom, fiction but... film, it's absolute no, tit. It, it's, yeah. it's also barely science fiction, really. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. just kind of strong people, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> strong, strong, oh, strong people, but with also um, the Goldbergs got a little pulley fitted that re- releases some sort of fire retardant. He's, no, he's oh, yeah. That scene. oh yeah! He sets on fire. And he's got like a little like release. Oh yeah! That makes, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, what does he say? Um, Devro, I'm just heating up as he puts the fire out, <laughs> so it makes no sense. Yeah, they've got that good that rip off Terminator POV shot as well. They must have paid for that. <laughs> so I, don't know they pre- I don't think they paid for anything. I think it's all tax write off. <laughs> Absolute. Fraud. It's an Uwe Bowl job, is it? They just made all the yeah. money back for yeah. flopping. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> Um, is Mick Rogers responsible for anything else? The director of this film. I've not looked up his. No, he's, he's not even on Wikipedia. He he's not he's got, got a link. A link on, yeah. No, which is never. He a did story, a lot of stunts. He's a stunt man, basically. He did oh, a lot of stunts, for things like Braveheart and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's probably a product. It was a film probably run by the production company and the. I've got nothing against stunt men, but you know, I mean, come on. It's <laughs> literally his only directing credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which, which is probably yeah. fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. We might all have. We might all be in that boat soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's still working. He was in um, uh, Axel the, Ridge, the Magnificent Seven, Stunts. yeah, and various other things. He's got him dressed up as uh, Mal Gibson in Braveheart. Oh yes, there you go. Yeah, he looks like well... he's a really good stuntman. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> do you think on set he like? Uh, Pulls out the anecdotes of how he once directed a fifty-five million dollar film. Forty-five million dollar <laughs> film. He, 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 he's actually credited. At, no, he's uncredited as stunts in *You Were a Soldier Return*. He did do stunts in the film. Yeah, so. that's I mean, insane, you though, isn't it? You know, this could be one of them situations. <laughs> you know, where they all fall out in the edit, and no one ends up with the credit. Oh, like so, Alan Smithy. Mm, yeah, so Alan someone Smithy. Ends, it, they give it to the stunt guy. Perhaps. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'd love yeah. to. I'd want to go back as well, because obviously with that budget, it, it must have been quite a must have been quite a push behind it, mustn't they? It? it must have been quite a big release. Yeah, he wrote an episode of Top of the Pops in in the seventies. <laughs> this God. guy, this guy, <laughs> <quite> a... <laughs> um, yeah. all right. So it's gone bottom of the list. Um, yeah, I would like to Ooh. watch the original Universal Soldier at some point because yeah, it's I, I'm great. Quite enjoying that. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's solid. 
This I, they all make us watch Demolition Man though. I love Demolition Man. That, oh, that is a genuinely yeah. bad, a good bad film, isn't it? Like it's all these sort of tatty fighting films of the nineties. I just don't. I yeah. don't. I never connected with them at the time. Demolition I never Man. had action figures. I know no, there was some nutty kids kids in school who always used to like the fighting films. I never. No, no. I, I didn't. No. Sorry, I love all that. That's just I love that. I love all that stuff. I, I think there's more to Demolition Man as well. Like you've got you know a lot more going on there. Mm. Not all good. Yeah. All pretty much bad. But you know. <laughs> the swear machine and the, the future, future Taco Bell, whatever it is. There's, there's some stuff to get into, but that's a different show. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have now got on our list 12 films. Um, I might read it all out for the last one last time. Shall I do it? 12 yeah. One last it. time and then make people go on the website. <clears throat> right, so you can get this list at sciencefictionratingsystem.com. You can uh, see every week there if you join late, something like that. Um, anyway, here's the list. So, number 12... New at number twelve, uh, it's <laughs> Universal Soldier: The Return, the worst film of all. The I worst actually, science fiction film of all time. That's quite good. That's the first one I've won. <laughs> Congratulations! I get we gave you that so that when like Lost World comes up, you don't get too angry and that goes like right down the list. Um, don't anyway. start now on that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at number eleven, um, Colin Trevorrow's Shit Fest: Safe and Not Guaranteed. <laughs> at number ten, Mel Brooks's that's Not, not Much fair. Better Spaceballs. Uh, number nine, Joe Dante's Inner Space. See, I do. That's the scene wrong to me now. Like, Inner Space was bad, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. We can't yeah. change it now. It's locked in. No. Anyway, no. number eight, Independence Day. Um, yeah, that's wrong as well. Yeah. High up should be high up. <laughs> number seven, now far too low on the list. It's John Carpenter's They Live. Uh, number six, it's Her. Um, her. Uh. Number five, another new entry, Silent Running. Today's highest new entry. Mm. Um, number four Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind number three Wally number two Jurassic Park and at number one it's still Star Wars Episode 4 colon A New Hope did you see the rumours of the um, original versions coming out on Blu-ray oh yeah. no uh, mm. being shot down it's not happening oh um, boo thanks but they said they might three seconds of being really happy there <laughs> Yeah, no, they, there was a lot of rumours saying that because it's the 40th anniversary course this year, um, yeah. that it will be finally happening. Um, uh, it's not happening, but they have, I read an interview saying that they have got a actual, um, they've got a print of the first film ready to go, basically. Good. Um, which was the hold-up for a long time, and also the rights issue still a hold-up, but, it, but oh, okay. it's going to happen eventually, isn't it? Good. All they've done is they've done like a, uh, like a Rogue One Tarkin sort of digital recreation of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I could believe it. Yeah, because yeah. they can't use That'd the original so footage. Funny. If you like doubled down, did like a super yeah. special edition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ruined everything. Now even the real things aren't real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was the agreement that Lucas made when he sold yeah. Yeah. to Disney. He said oh, you can have it all, but this, yeah. I, I've got to do. I get final left, edit. He just hit <laughs> delete. Yeah. He just hit yeah. delete on the actual <laughs> yeah. footage. Well, it's all gone now, but I've got these uh, CG models of Jar Jar Binks yes. on my yeah. uh, Enjoy. laptop. Enjoy. <laughs> I watched The Phantom Menace the other day. It was on telly. Not, did you? Know. Did, how I don't, did actually don't mind Why? it. Why? Oh, wow. Oh, again, okay. a different... Is, um, again, we've yeah, said, have we before, it. we're going to have a Star Wars special at some point. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll feature that. Um, but we should do a uh, Bill Paxton, right? Yeah, so next week... To um, honour Bill Paxton, who sadly died this weekend, we're going to do three Bill Paxton films. Um, so we're going to do his most iconic role, probably, other than the HBO series Big Love, uh, Aliens. Um, I, I liked him in Titanic. I know it's not science fiction, but he was he was memorable in Titanic. Who is he you in know, Titanic? He's a, sci- <laughs> he's a scientist at the beginning. You he's know, the, the old one woman's goes, like, mate. Oh, take right, take yes, me yeah, back, yeah. Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Did you read? Um, did you read? Uh, what's his name? John, uh, James Cameron's little thing about um, Bill Paxton. No, no. It's quite quite touching. They were quite friends, yeah. good friends. Well, I um, met him. I met him last year in Cannes, and we ended up basically having lunch next together because we were in like this little area. And we were just waiting for something to happen, and they started. Then they brought out some food, and we were just sat there. Mm. Me, him, and this other guy I was working with, and we just had a little chat. It was quite cool. But we were talking mm. about. Like um, in in the interview we were doing with him, but it was about um, he was talking about how when he was researching for Titanic, because hmm. I we, the question was like, uh, what do you what would you like your career to be remembered as? 
Mm. Bill Paxton and he then he started talking about how when he was looking into Titanic and the captain of the Titanic was interviewed before the final voyage before the first voyage of the Titanic and yeah. he said how would you like this to be uh, written about and he goes uneventful and <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah Oh, yeah. yeah, that was sort of That's his. Good. That was his view of his own sort of career, in the sense that, you know, yeah. he, he never became a massive, yeah, superstar, but he had a very solid, and he was always oh, into yeah. the character. Yeah. He was he was always well liked and a lovely guy. So that was, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah, little so anecdote he, for you. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Um, must be a uh, little bit of stardust there. Falling onto the podcast. <laughs> Just uh, scraps from the table. Yeah, yeah, a little dusting, a light dusting. Um, right, so we're going to be watching Aliens, uh, first of all, Yeah. which I think is the first film for a long time that's going to trouble the top of this list. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be up there somewhere. Um, and then Slipstream, which oh, I've did not we, seen... Did we, did we decide on that? I don't think we did. Yeah, Slipstream. We did, did we? Okay. It's either that or Edge of Tomorrow. Which which would you rather? I'd rather do Edge of Tomorrow. Let's keep these real shit ones right out of it now. You can't, but Chris, you can't keep <laughs> crap films out of this else. It gets a bit. It just um, you're just going to use up all the good films too quickly. There, there, there's enough good films out there. There, there is. Edge of Tomorrow is not a good film. I know it's not. Oh, okay. But <laughs> I know it's all not. Right. And okay, I intend so, to so tell we'll you go why. With... We'll go, we'll go with Edge of Tomorrow then. Yeah. And our third film is Predator 2. Mm. So that list again. Aliens, Edge of Tomorrow and Predator 2. Cool. So um, you've got two weeks to watch those. Um, we'll be back with those. In the meantime, if you'd like to get in touch, you can always email us at mail at sciencefictionratingsystem.com with all your comments, suggestions uh, for future-themed weeks and um, anything, really. Just, you know, say Reach hello. Out. We've got Instagram now and Twitter. Yeah. So on yeah. Twitter at SF Rating System, is that right? That's it. Yeah, and Instagram at Science Fiction Rating System. And I meant to Instagram out while we're recording, but I might do it at the end here. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we've also got a website at sciencefictionratingsystem.com where you can see the list. Um yeah, so hope you've enjoyed it. Get in touch as I watch Chris's cursor dance around the list hypnotically. It's like I'm, a gonna wait, I'm waiting until you log off and then Independence Day. Oh, <laughs> damn it, not again. Going up. It won't work because I've told the people now. The people know the truth. So yeah. Know. yeah. All right, so thus concludes episode four of the Science Fiction Ranking System. Uh, Chris and Alex, I'll see you back here in two weeks. Bye-bye. Night. Night. See ya.